Hey everyone, I'm Delicia and happy Sunday to you. Thanks for tuning in to my weekly top five cigars. These of course are the cigars that uh, came straight from my humidor and are highly recommended for your week of smoking. I'm a little bit behind today, so I'm actually just lighting up. Hopefully you guys have had a very nice week and are getting ready for, you know, the next upcoming week. And um, hopefully that includes stocking up your humidors. I do appreciate all the comments everybody leaves. I know a lot of you try to find the cigars that I recommend. And in knowing that, I try to select cigars that are not super hard to find because I know it's frustrating when there's a cigar that's recommended and it's nowhere to be found. So starting with number five this week, we have an oldie but goodie. This is the CAO Brasilia. So you should be able to find this pretty much any brick and mortar. The Brasilia is available in a variety of different Vitolas. I actually have a full review of this cigar. Um, actually, I did it as a pairing video. It was a cooking. It was a taste of Brazil. So I did um, some different type of barbecue and I had a Capirina recipe paired with the CAO Brasilia. Very flavorful, but on its own, it's still great. Um, nice price point. It's right around the five or six dollars, again, depending on that Vitola. But, um, you know, it's, again, it's not a fantastic stick, but it's a good one. It's a nice staple. It's an easy to smoke. If you're looking for a nice flavorful Maduro, this is the way to go. So to give you an overview, this one is featuring um, a nice dark Brazilian wrapper, Nicaraguan binder and filler. You get the leathers, the black coffees. You get a little bit of the cocoa, uh, red pepper comes out as well. And then again, if you pair it, uh, depending on what you're having with it, that will introduce some different flavors or even enhance some of the flavors that I mentioned already. But again, the very colorful CAO Brasilia to match the beautiful Brazilian flag. Number four this week is the, the newer H. Upman. So these were launched um, at the IPCPR trade show this year. So you should be able to find them again, pretty much any brick and mortar. H. Upman is a very uh, well-known name and they have done some fun collaborations over the past few years. This one is a tribute to the island of Hispaniola, of course, um, current day Dominican Republic and Haiti, but it's an old school tribute and um, beautiful looking cigar. So nice red and gold band with the Jose Mendez um, secondary band underneath it, but very beautiful background story as well as a, you know, very nice stick. This one is featuring a, an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, Dominican Olor on the binder, and then Pilotico, uh, Anduyo, and Nicaraguan on the filler for a creamy cashew, cedar, kind of a toasted bread, little bits of white pepper uh, mixed into this one, so very nice. Number three is the newer uh, Diamond Crown Black Diamond. This one is the Black Diamond Radiant, so it's a small batch, uh, Epicurean cigar. This one is done uh, apparently in limited runs because they're claiming that it is, uh, what did they, how did they word it? It was the uh, very, it was like the top um, quality control type of thing. So again, um, very nice stick. So far so good. I'm liking the flavors. I smoked one couple days back and it was nice. It was a nice robust type of a flavor profile. Um, really nice, again, coming out of the Diamond Crown, JC Newman family. Um, they collaborate with the Fuente family, of course, if you weren't aware of that, to produce this beautiful black diamond here, featuring a Connecticut Havana seed wrapper, Dominican binder, and then a five-year-old age Dominican filler. So musty earth cedar, uh, you pick up a little bit of anise and like a dusted cocoa little bits that I mentioned the spice it has a little bit of um, kind of the combination of black and red pepper kind of goes back and forth between the two so but not overpowering it's a nice muted spice so you can taste the flavor of the spice but it's not giving the full effect of it if you will so really nice number two this week has never been on my lineup before. I actually um, only have a couple of these cigars. This is the Menelik, and this is by Foundation Cigar Company. So Nick Malillo, I'm sorry, Nick Malillo. If you guys aren't familiar with him, he is amazing. Um, 
I'm proud to call him a good friend of mine. He makes some incredible cigars, has beautiful backstories with all of them, including the artwork and just an incredible person in the cigar industry. Anyways, this cigar was until recently an event only stick. This was one, I believe it was one of the cigars that like, I think the backstory is that he was blending it and there was a limited supply of the type of tobacco that was being used and it was one that he liked to smoke. So it was kind of like an event only, like you couldn't even buy it at events. You'd have to just go to an event and hope that he gave you one kind of a thing. So uh, again, it got some traction and became popular. So he actually released it as a, a regular, a regular limited run cigar. So I think it's a thousand, a thousand boxes a quarter is how many come out. Um, so, but it's regular. It's just that there's a limited amount every quarter of this cigar that comes out but very flavorful. And again, Menelik is said to be the son of, I think it's um, Queen Sheba. And oh, I didn't write it down. Oh my goodness. Scratch that. Um, yeah, just a great history with his overall portfolio and just everything that he does. So a huge fan of um, the, the cigars that are coming out of you know his hands, basically. So this one is featuring a San Andres wrapper um, Jalapa Corojo binder, and then Nicaraguan filler from Esteli Condega and Jalapa. Nice amount of anise in there, that red licorice kind of flavor to it. Um, you do pick up a milk chocolate, a cedar, little bits of spice, but um, definitely a nice stick. It is a box press, a little pigtail at the top, so beautiful, nice um, rich color to the wrapper, uh, just a nice looking stick with a great story. And number one is joining us again. It has been in the lineup but i think it's been a little while because i actually haven't smoked this one in a little while this is the dumbarton sin compromiso um, steve saka's masterpiece one of his masterpieces He's another one that is just um, an incredible blender and a wealth of knowledge in our industry I, I love any opportunity i get to sit down and talk with him he's really funny he's actually um, he's a bit intimidating when you see him you know he's a big guy and he kind of has a a little bit of a stern uh, outward, what do you call it, um, projection, if you will. But then when you sit down and talk with him, he's like such a cool, down to earth, humble person that is just like making cigars that I think he's confident enough to know that his cigars kick ass and they're really good, but I don't think he cares. I think he's just like, hey, I, I have a great palate and I make cigars that I like and hopefully you guys like them. I think they're good. And I think the majority of people that smoke them will agree because he's one of those brands that um, pretty much any cigar that I've smoked of his, I've really enjoyed it. I did a recent review of his Sobremesa Brulee, totally effed up the name, called it a creme brulee, had several people point that out to me. So I'm gonna take that one and just, you know, totally mess that one up. But nonetheless, it was a great cigar. I look forward to smoking more of those. That's a great, um, Connecticut, very creamy, flavorful, but sorry, back to the Sin Compromiso, which has been around for a little bit. Has a beautiful San Andres Negro wrapper, a hybridized Ecuadorian Habano binder, um, which is said to be a thin Ligero, which is kind of an oxymoron, I think, because Ligero is usually thicker, so there must be a backstory on that one, which I'd love to ask him, actually. I didn't even, I just looked at that description recently when I was putting my notes together for this. But um, anyways, yeah, he finds some some good tobacco to work with. So that's one of the, the things that makes his cigars stand out from others. So um, continuing on, there's the uh, Nicaraguan filler, but it's grown on an independent plantation. And this one, you're gonna get the aged leather, you get the toasted toffee nut, black pepper, caramel coffee, um, just really, really good stick. I, again, I'm sure most of you watching, unless you're newer to cigar smoking, you're probably not a stranger to this cigar or to his brand. Maybe you haven't smoked this particular stick, but uh, certainly a great cigar. And hopefully you can find these. I've seen them in a majority of brick and mortar, you know, lounges that are out there from all across the state. So you should be able to find him. Again, most of these cigars, with the exception of the Menelik, I'm not sure how many brick and mortars carry um, a bigger portfolio of that cigar, but everything else you should be able to find 
pretty easily. So again, thanks so much for tuning in. I love your comments. Thanks for hanging out with me on your Sunday. And again, don't forget to post your pictures on Instagram, tag me. And thanks again for subscribing and make sure you like the video. Thanks. Cheers.